Here it is guys, the most commonly asked question on my channel. How are you doing a front wheel drive burnout in your RS3 when it's an all wheel drive vehicle? Here it is, step by step tutorial on how to do a burnout in your RS3. First disclaimer, these cars were not meant to do this. This is something that you are tricking the car into thinking that it's fully front wheel drive to do a burnout, warm up the tires, and then send power to the rears as well as the fronts for your launch. Second disclaimer, I am not a professional. I'm just a guy who is a hardcore enthusiast that is trying to go as fast as I can in the quarter mile in my RS3. A lot of these techniques have been actually shared with me from the custom code chat group that I belong to with a lot more experienced drag racers than I am. A little trial and error and their help is how this was figured out, how it works best in your RS3. Third disclaimer, you can break a lot of stuff in your RS3 by doing this. I do this along with many of the other guys that are taking this quite seriously because you want to go as fast as you possibly can. By warming up your fronts in a front wheel drive biased all wheel drive system, you're going to get better traction on launch. Improve that 60 foot and improve putting power down to the ground sooner than later. Now with all that said, here's your step by step tutorial on how to do a burnout in your Audi RS3. So the first step you're going to have to take to be able to do a burnout in an RS3 is you're going to have to install a Haldex switch. This was custom made by Rider Performance. All it does is it simply tricks the car into thinking that it doesn't have all wheel drive and only the front tires are going to receive power. Once you've then done the burnout, you turn it back on telling the computer, telling the fuse, that the fuse is back in there, there's power going to it, and it is an all-wheel drive car again, and power needs to be sent to the rears. So as previously shown in the diagram, it's fuse F44. It is a 15. That's the number that you're going to see on the fuse itself. So you have to pop off this panel. There you go. Now, as you can see, mine has already been wired. But if it wasn't to have been wired, there's going to be that 15 fuse tucked in there in position F44 as shown in the previous drawing. Now, like I said earlier, you can get IROS by emailing them, sales at irosmotorsport.com, to sell you a switch. It might not look identical to this, but this again is a custom made piece by Rider Performance. I've also seen other people put their switches right here. So they buy this extra piece, they cut a hole in here, and they have a switch here. Rider Performance and I both agreed that it's better over here because there's too much going on over here and when you're on the drag strip you don't want to accidentally hit something else. So this is where we ended up putting it. When it's in up, it's on. When it's down, it is off and it's as if the power to the fuse has been pulled or the fuse itself has been removed. All right, now that I've shown you which fuse to pull or where to install your Haldex control, I will show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do a burnout. First thing you need to do, start your car. Now that your car has been started, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is put it into dynamic mode. You do that by hitting your drive select button. All right, now you can see there it says dynamic. Second thing you wanna do, turn off your traction control. Right there. By clicking it once, you're going to turn sport mode on, which limits a bit of the tire spin. We want it completely off, which means you have to hold down the button. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. ESC off, off, and off. Now your traction control is fully off and won't intervene whatsoever. Third thing you're gonna wanna do, hit that Haldex switch. 
when that happens, your car is gonna light up like a Christmas tree and have a bunch of warnings. Stabilization control malfunction, hill hold assist unavailable, and finally, tire pressure malfunction. All of this is totally normal and what you expect to see because your system's basically telling you something is definitely wrong, you don't have all wheel drive right now, but for the purposes of what we're doing, this is totally fine. So, next step is you're going to want to put the car into manual. So, down into the appropriate gear, into drive, it'll come up as S1 because you're in dynamic, then you're gonna wanna push over into manual. So it says M1 on your dash. You burn out in first gear. You don't wanna have it in sport or drive because you don't want it to shift on you. You wanna stay in first gear. So the next thing you'd wanna do is you'd wanna be holding up on the actual parking brake the entire time you're doing the burnout. Not until the burnout is done and completed do you push down on it to roll out of the burnout. Oh, that's my GPS saying hello there. So, next thing you wanna do is you would wanna activate launch control. So your left foot, see if I can show you down there, would be on the brake, right fully hard on the gas. Now, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm actually gonna to cut to that footage of me at the drag strip doing the burnout. <laughs> RPMs are going to go up to about 3200 to 4 grand depending on the tune you're using. If you're stock, if you're stage one, stage two, whether you're custom code, whether you're APR, whether you're unitronic, whether you're integrated engineering, whether you're 034 motorsport, there's a whole bunch of them out there. But depending on which tune you use, your launch control limit will be at a different level. You don't need to build boost, you just need to get up to that level and let go of the brake. Once you let go of the brake, tires are gonna go spinning and you're going to be doing a burnout. Key here, big key here, do not hit your red line. Do not let it bounce off your red line. People have damaged things and broken things by doing that. The sweet spot that I find is holding it in between 5,000 and 6,000 RPM. That way, your tires are burning, they're going, and you have enough RPMs to keep spinning. Meanwhile, this is all happening, your hand has still not let go of the e-brake. It is still being held up. Once your tires start spinning, I cut the wheel right and left, right and left. Reason being is, these cars do not come with a limited slip differential, meaning that power will be diverted to only one of the front tires. By cutting from right to left or from left to right, you're sending more power or attempting to tell the car to send power to one or the other wheels to get both of them spinning equally because you want to warm up both front tires. <laughs> Once that's done, you're going to want to push down on the e-brake, not just releasing it, but physically pushing it down and roll out of the actual burnout. Now, some people, when you're getting used to it, might feel more comfortable doing the launch control while it's up and then letting off of the gas, coming to a stop and then pushing it down. I prefer to roll out of it. I'm not sure if that's harder or easier on the system, but that's just my personal preference. Once that's done, your burnout is complete. If you're gonna launch in sport mode, get it back over. Make sure it's back up there. And the last thing, always remember to turn your Haldex switch back on. Your dash will not change. The lights will still stay all lit up. But don't worry about that. As long as your switch is up, it will remain on and you will have all wheel drive again. Now, if this bugs you and it's all lit up and you don't feel comfortable with it, then you can actually key cycle your car. And all of the lights will be gone.
then you can launch with a clear dashboard. It's that easy. <laughs> I know it's so many steps. It takes some practice. It's a little nerve wracking. If you guys follow the channel and you saw me start to do burnouts again this season, or even I think last time I went out, there's so many little steps here and there that it doesn't come naturally right away. It's muscle memory, things that take a few times to do. But I really hope that this whole video explains the process well enough that you guys are able to do it on your own. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please either DM me on Instagram, comment on the video itself on YouTube, uh, ask away, email me. I'm more than happy to do my best to answer any questions that you have. I want you guys to enjoy your RS3 as much as I do without damaging it. So let me know in the comments below if you do have any questions, comments, anything like that. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing. Make sure you hit that notification icon so you always get notified when I upload new content to hopefully educate you guys in this case or entertain you guys when I'm back at the racetrack. Thanks everyone for watching and I look forward to keep bringing you new content in the future.